Blue Blues talking at Henry's Blues House. We're delighted tonight to welcome the actor who, in a few minutes' time, is going to be holding sway upstairs. This is Big Jim Neris of Big Jim and the Alabama Boogie Band. So let's uh, welcome Big Jim Neris and particularly Henry. Huge round of applause! Hooray! Five people sounded like a hundred. <laughs> That's what we need. So tell me, Alan, when did you first the track encounter the blues? When did you first hear that music that's obviously so strongly affected the rest of your life? Yeah, well, as a, as a young fella, I was lost. I didn't know quite where to go with music. Contemporary music didn't really do it for me. Um, I started getting into a bit of Eddie Cop and rock and roll and stuff. Mm. And an absolutely pivotal moment in my life, and I'll always be grateful to him, a very, very good friend of mine, called Ian Willie, from, uh, from school. We'd finished A levels, and, uh, and he popped around with this video called The Blues Brothers, which I hadn't heard of. So I'm very, very excited to put on this, uh, this video, The Blues Brothers. And up to then, my passion had been American cars. I loved American cars. And I loved all things American. So I put this film on it, and genuinely, I watched it four times in succession, all through the night, and I was absolutely blown away. I loved the music. The music was a revelation to me. Elwood and Jay Blues were a revelation to me. And I loved the fact that they looked so cool in those battered black suits and the, uh, the trilby hats and the black tie. So I thought to myself, well, what I need to do, I need to be in a band like the Blues Brothers. But unfortunately, I had absolutely no musical skill whatsoever. So I thought, well, anything I can try and do is sing and play the harmonica like Elwood, because that would be my, my new hero. So within about two months, I've got several harmonicas and I was going to places like Reddington Rare Records and I was picking up these old albums on Little Walter uh, Sonny Boy Williams and all this, all this old stuff and I was starting to learn it and in the meantime I got and got myself a black suit the watch and the tie and the hat um, and also I got, um, I got a black and white American police car yes I've got a black I've got the car uh, I got the kept up, uh, and so I was basically swanning around Stourbridge, and spending all morning on fuel <laughs> in this car, listening to the Blues Brothers. That was the start, and at almost at the same time, a little good friend of mine, Ross, he um, he told me about this band that was playing in Bewdley called the Big Town Playboys. We'd never heard of them. He said, they're absolutely great. So we went down in the, uh, my old Pontiac, down to uh, the first in Bewdley, and uh, we came in and there were these guys standing on stage in all these old suits, and there was not right base, and they were just about to start. I remember walking to the bar, and they started doing chicken shank movie. And it was that moment I saw the light, I literally swung around and that was, I was absolutely transfixed by that sort of music. And so he started, but the lemon, the red lemon, he started a few months after the uh, playing for his. So the lemon, the lemon was the first band. Yeah. Good start. It was a good start. But to be absolutely fair, we weren't that good to start with. Uh, I mean, I was pretty terrible. I freely admit it. But I was enthusiastic, you see. Um, and we entered, um, we played at a friend's party, an 18 party, with five, six pop bands from around the who were really good. And we were terrified, we were going to make fools of ourselves. But we started doing this wagon shop or set. I remember I was, uh, I had a couple of bottles of wine just too. It was our first gig for a bit of Dutch courage. All my words were written out over the floor. They became saturated with beer almost immediately, so I couldn't read anything. I was half cut, I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. But it did actually go down really, really well. And, 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 that, and that was the start. We said, we've got to do this again. And so we, uh, we carried on. Then we did a battle of the bands at Stourbridge Town Ball with lots of very, very good contemporary bands. And we won. And we thought there's obviously a market for this sort of music. 
So who was in the original lemons? The original lemons, you're not the trouble, Neil Bullock, good player. Neil Bullock was a great player. Still is one of the best. Oh, great player. And he was only, uh, I think he was 16, because mum used to bring him to the, uh, the rehearsals. And even at 16, he was very headstrong. I was about 21, and I was scared, rooted of him, as, as was everybody else in the band. He was a bit, a bit of a taskmaster. So there was him, but there was Paul Roberts and Bob Pat, and my Joe. Okay. Good Dave time. Green, another good jazz player. Um, a dear friend of mine, Dave Crowley, was on piano. Uh, and he was supposed to be really, really piano, and we were kids. So how do you find, as a non-player, as a non-musician, as a non-band member, how do you find people that kind of Um, begging letters in those days, because there's no internet. <laughs> Few found it. It's funny how it just all, it really just started, just drifted together, because Dave, the piano player, and, uh, and Ian, we were, we were just great friends. We all played it, and so it came together. Like the first bass player was Adrian Charles, who went on to uh, great things. BBC. Yeah. Really a fight, yeah. And I think actually, I mean, he's only, he's only bass player ever, only three strings on his bass. It's pretty uh, well, basic stuff, to be honest. But uh, it was enough to get us off the ground, you know. And um, we rehearsed, you know, every week, a couple of times a week, every week. And basically, we all put up practice into uh, shape. Let's follow the career a little bit, before we go back to your other influences. Um, how long have you done less? I mean, I knew of you for years. I have we looked for quite a few times. Oh, yeah, we played. We played for yeah. many times alongside the, uh, the Biscuit Boys. Yeah, and the Ronnie Scots. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. Scots played Ronnie Scots. So yeah. tell me, how long were you going to go on the road? And, and when you finished, yeah. why did you finish? And when you finished, how many of the original guys were still in the band? The Red Lemon Electric Blues Band, as was, it actually finished when I, I got married. Was that part of the deal? Yeah. <laughs> the wife, that's part of it. If you get married, you've got to leave the band. No, it wasn't. Get a proper job. But <laughs> the trouble was, he said, there was nine people and the manager. So you had to work really hard and do a lot of gigs to make some money. It's like I was living at home with my good old mum and dad, who were a great influence. You know, and dad, especially, he used to play Boogie Big all the time. So I lived at home, I've got a Cadillac. I was like, absolutely. I had a great time. But when I got married, I thought, well, I need to settle down with And the hours, you know, getting back at eight in the morning. It wasn't conducive. You know, all the women thrown so I had to just it had to <laughs> Strange enough, that never really happened. It's never quite been right. No, 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 that hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. So I'm married again, I don't want any of that sort of business not anymore. Um yeah, so Yeah, so I got married, and the, the band then continued as the Red Lemons. With, with you, without you? Without me. We lost the Electric Blues band, a bit, just to sort of make a bit of a differentiation. With a guy called Graham D, who was a fabulous singer, who now sings for the um, Climax Blues band. Right. So he took over from me. And now the band, the Red Lemons, is still, is still going. Um, and Neil Bullock, the drummer, is the only remaining member. The rest have dispersed, but a lot of them went into great things. Uh, the bass player that ended up featuring and I played, he played with Jimmy Fight. He did great, you know, it's the best bass playing job in the world, not the, um, and, and a lot of them played to you know, real big bands. Take that and all that sort of stuff, you know. But it is. So a lot of the people who carried on are real pro session musicians then. So what tempted you <laughs> what made your wife? Allow you to return the scene. Um, I divorced her. I mean, uh, that, that, that cured her. That. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm basic, I missed it. I missed it. So after about four years, we got came with another band, Big Jim's Boogie Band, did a few gigs, um, you know, sort of gently eased back into it. And then I played with uh, like the track of the Woodpeckers for many, many years. Uh, it's a good, good piano player. That was that's a real up tempo, sort of boogie woogie rock and roll outfit. Good, really, really good. But whatever band you always get steered towards stuff to try and please the masses. So with this new little band, this is the trio that we're going to uh, play with tonight, our first gig, uh, we have to be a bit more specialist. 
We're not going to play my Sunny Sally or Soul Man or anything like that. But great tunes, but, but older, you know, junk, junk, West Coast blues stuff. And hopefully we can stay on this sort of slightly more specialist path. Can I just check about your repertoire? Did you infer then that you don't do any originals? No, we don't do any originals. How absolutely intelligent and sensible and basic. Because how are you, you and me and people in this room ever going to sit down and write songs like that huge, wonderful record you just sat there? Yeah, so many great songs. People written. seem to think playing originals is, is a quality yeah. to be admired. I think not. I think you play great songs. You yeah. have to write them. If you're happy to write great songs, yeah. that's fine, but most of us don't. We don't. I mean, I've written two songs. I've got co wrote a number called Jam Roll Boogie. Well, we all know that. We sing along together. <laughs> and another one called Constipation Blues, which, uh, which <laughs> is more likely. Uh, yes, yeah, so my writing of that is not very good. But that's it, we're doing so many great things. But a lot of them have gone into obscurity, and you, and you plop them out the hat, and people think you've written them anyway. Yeah, exactly. Can I go back a bit to your early influence? The words boogie woogie crop up in a lot of your yeah, conversation. Yeah. Um, so, was it your dad that turned you on to boogie woogie film players? Dad, dear old dad, he, um, we always had a piano, his, his mom was a good piano player, really good. And um, dear old dad, he tried very, very hard to play the piano. And boogie woogie, and he knew a few little riffs, which he passed on to me. So as a kid, we'd play, I'd, I'd do the bass, do, 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 and dad would do the top end, you know. My repertoire lasted about 30 seconds. But it's quite, quite a good little repertoire, you know, it's a bit of stunned, so oh god, he's good. And I've only got 30 seconds worth. So Dad was always playing these real old 78s. And it was like who? People like Pat Pete, uh, Al Gammons, and uh, all, all these guys, you know. Um, and he used to have some real old 78s originals. It was a friend of his that had a good record collection. So he had these, these cracky old records, you know, that we absolutely loved. So that was uh, a sort of deep setting to me then. So I loved, I, I did love Boogie Woogie. But who is who vocally? You talk about a few of the old guys, like, like, like Walter and, yeah. and, and Muddy. Yeah. You see, a lot of, once, once I started to, um, because I didn't know much about them, because I was listening to a lot of the old guys. I must admit, after that, I started to listen to, um, to contemporary bands that were doing the old stuff. So I used to love, and I still think Mark Sanders had a big town player voice. He's got one of the most wonderful voices ever. Yeah. You know, I think he writes a lot of great. I used to listen to a lot of early Elvis, and loved early Elvis. And it may surprise you, but I absolutely love Tom Jones. Oh, that really surprises me. Yeah, Tom Jones. I put it all night. I thought, I thought Tom Jones was absolutely, um, absolutely fantastic. Especially his early, especially his early rhythm and blues stuff. But when you saw the blues book through early education, which I think is, it, I agree with you, it's the finest foot film ever, ever made. It is the yeah. They played great homage to yeah. the originals in, in the film. Oh, yeah. with, 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 with John B. John Lee, 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 James May, Cap Calloway, what a, Mac, what a, Mac, yeah. Mac, 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 Murphy, and, yeah. Uh, Lulu Marie, I mean, but they were terrific influences. I would have thought that that would have taken you back into the chess catalogue. The Little Waters and the Howling Wolves. And the oh, I, I, I have, I have doubled it there. It may be because I, I used to go out and watch a lot of bands. Because I lived by the, uh, the Robin Hood in Bradley. Really? And in its day, I'll be up there at least twice a week, seeing great rhythm and blues bands. Um, on a week, I don't know, at least at least fifty times a year, we used to play there a lot. So, so I, I started this to the more contemporary versions of like the old stuff. But I still like to listen to, to the old, to the old guys who love the original guys, because they've got that technique very very simple. Yeah. Um, I've been to a lot of boy bands like that. Now being in a three piece, it does make you quite vulnerable. So if you've got a big band, you know, obviously you hide behind them, but it, it's, um, there's a lot of other instruments going on. When there's only three of you, it's been an interesting experiment, this has. 
you are very exposed. So I've been listening to some of the old guys, the way they used to play. They got a great reward for this one to get. Sweet Boy Reason sounds absolutely huge, they did all this great stuff to get these, these wonderful sounds. So I certainly have big influence. But there's a lot of great harmonica players about now, like Jason Ritchie, who's taken things to the next level. The old ones are beautiful, wonderfully simple, full of feeling. But I mean, it's people like Jason Ritchie and the guy from the birds. It, 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 it's all it's a modern take on the old stuff. Much more technical, so artists and that as well. Sometimes, don't you think, that technical ability can drown out the art the, the oh, soul? Yeah. And, and do you also think that there's something like wrong with having clear space? You don't feel it every moment, do you? Or do well, you? No, I don't know. I think, what clear space. I think the yeah. Athens probably did that. They probably yeah. had a wall of sound, as it were. It was a big but, sound at that time. I think people like the Walter made. Yeah. And, and, and sorry, but I like to say. Yeah. And smoothly prior. Yeah. It's in that space. Yeah. And that focuses you on what they actually yeah. do. A lot of the American guys did, didn't they? Mm. And of course that takes nerve. I think mean, I think British bands, a lot of British bands do try and fill a lot of gaps. You'll be hearing a lot of gaps tonight. Look. Basically when we finish there'll be like a, a gap and nothing will happen, then we'll start again. <laughs> and then probably another the gap about three minutes later. But um, I have to ask, are these gaps rehearsed or will they will just be happen? These will be spontaneous gaps. <laughs> Where we'll be waiting for, we've put that in for applause. So we've left a little gap for some applause and then we'll start you know, the again. You know the post you say applause just so the audience know. We were hoping you'd do that. Yeah. I'm honest. We could, we could we scribble something out now. Applause now. So, <laughs> in contemporary bands, by yeah. contemporary I mean I guess I mean companies bands. Yeah. Post 1960s. Yeah. Who who are your favourites? I absolutely loved Root. What do sort of Root and Blues? Mm. Great band. Great horn section. Great vocals. Mm. And they do some really good Yeah. So those are the I started to I started to listen to. And of course now when we started, it wasn't actually like going and finding a record. Or a tape, listening to blues on two maybe. But of course now everything's just just get your phone out, it's just a click away. And it's so it's so easy now. Anything you want to know in the world is there. And all people watch are funny cat videos. <laughs> Most of the time. Well, I, 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 it was interrupting in personal thought. I think it's a values music. Mm. I think when you found a precious album. Oh, it yeah. meant a lot more than mm. suddenly finding an obscure BB King to be on the pocket for mm. on YouTube. No, he does it. It's not like that vinyl there. Or a great photo, you know, all, all the photos you want on. On YouTube, on for YouTube. So, when did you first hear live on the stage originals? These guys that came over up, Lightning Slim, Snooky Pryor, Jose James. Washboard, really good, really red. Well, those guys came up in the 70s. You must have been curious to those. Well, I didn't really have much of a knowledge of them to be Because my, my education came from, from, that, from that film, that was, that was the springboard. Perfect. And then, and then the, uh, the playboy, well, I became very friendly with the members of the town playboys. So, Ricky Cool. You could say, how did you play that? That riff you played there, how, how, did you, how, how did you hear that? And he'd tell me, and then and I, and I drew it out, you see, somehow on a record. And that, and that was the way I, um, I got to start to listen to that sort of stuff. So we started playing, we were that busy playing. And we've all got all these different influences coming in. I mean, Neil Brown was really into modern jazz, which used to leave me cold. I mean, we weren't a modern jazz band, you know. But we didn't, we, we didn't really, I don't think at that point we really knew what we liked. I know now exactly what I like. I know, I know what I like, and this is the sort of thing I'm trying to pursue, is it? So if you're fronting Red Lemon Electric Blues button now, mm. what would you do differently from what you did then? Repertoire? Style? No, I think, I think, Solos? um... I think, to be honest, I think we got it just right. Going back, 
we got it right because because we had such a great fan base. And you know, the, the people, you know, the customers are always right. We used to get a lot of people to see us. And about, I think it was about four years ago, it was um, 13 years since we first had established Town Hall. So we, uh, this is a sort of big undertaking, got in touch with everybody. And the, uh, the trombone was in Australia. We got him back, we did a reunion at Savage Town Hall. He, he came over? Yeah, yeah, came over, yeah. We got him over on the cheapest forward boat we could, you know, took months. We did a fucking get here. And we actually did, we did two nights at Savage Town Hall. Fantastic. So that shows we, we, got, we were certainly doing something right. Um, I think we caught the, the, the right music at the right time. Um, and the Blues Brothers music, although we didn't play, we played about six Blues Brothers tracks. Everything else was in that York, you see. I was very much aware of the Blues Band, and I have to say they did seem to me to come out of the Blues Band. Yeah. It's, it's, the influences were quite obvious. And great. Yeah. Great, 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 great film ever. Yeah. But can you tell me, it sounds to me like you haven't recorded as much as maybe you should have done. Am I wrong? Um, it would have been nice to do more recordings. We did, uh, we did a couple of albums and, and a good tank with the lemons. Yeah, I think there was, there was room to do more. I certainly like now, now it's probably mature a bit, to do, to do a little bit more recording, and I think we probably will. Depending on how tonight goes, <laughs> we might do some more recording, I guess. Um, yeah, I'd like to think we could do some recording. And um, I certainly mature, and I used to be absolutely frantic. I was bouncing around, I, you know, I used to try and put the stage on it, but I mean, I can't do that anymore. I sort of shuffle around. I'm going to try to rely more on singing and playing harmonica, so I don't know that's going to go. Oh, so. I don't embarrass you. You know that John Belushi did all his own. Oh, amazing. He did the last. All those gambles, all those songs, yeah. all those cartwheels. Yeah, he did the last. Wasn't it fantastic? I can dance like Elvin Blue, but not like John Belushi. So, yeah. And of course, he's dead now. Shame. Yeah. The great uh, artist's gone. Well, this is really interesting, but I'm worried about our time because uh, you're on stage in 15 minutes. Right, so, well, well, we, uh, so let's open, open up to the gathered boards and uh, see yeah. if you've got any questions. But any from you, Daniele, must be in English. Yeah. He's Italian. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ciao. So, That's it now. Yeah. So, who's got a question? Can can the piano play? We've got any questions? Yeah. What are we going to play tonight? How, how do we how do we start? Choo 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 boom. Oh, that's no problem. No, we don't. Don't we? Come on, Ken. Let's have a question for you. How much are we going to get paid? No, it's just um, <laughs> it's all quite exciting for me because I mean I've, I've been in the game longer. I've been the oldest in the, in the band as it is, but it's a case of um, I don't know. I I, I just want to know. Um, how things are going to pan out, which no one knows, you know, because I mean, I'm a and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is great. It's more an observation rather than a question. But having uh, just me, the piano, and Jim, three vocals, I mean, that's. It's lovely having three vocals in this band because Ken and Andy, yeah. both great singers, having getting some nice harmonies, slightly do what pish in place, which yeah, is really yeah. nice. It's, I mean, it's, it's, obviously, we've got to expand our repertoire, so... Yeah. We've got three songs. Let's not, let's not rush things That's together. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three very, very we'll long start, songs. We'll start them differently three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how old were you, Jim, when you first picked up a mouthful? Uh, I was about... Um, about 19? <laughs> yeah, about 19. That's quite late, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I used to. That's I'm, what they call, I'm what they call a wet player. Yeah. A very wet player, you see. There's a lot of saliva and stuff. So the wood tends to expand. Right. Then you end up sort of cutting your lips up. So now I've got the plastic body. To, which, um, I don't know what silly boy that's saying. Does this apply to your wires as well? <laughs> plastic body. <laughs> more inflatable. Plastic <laughs> <laughs> bit coarse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people, some people have No, you need to play wooden. Yeah, yeah. Well, the old guys we used to work, they were like green guns. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it is the, the harmonica of choice with the plates. But not easy, you know, not easy to play. It's like everything else, you know, everything's become easier. It's easy, you know. I've been plastering the day and it's easy now compared to the originals, the plates that people really do plaster it. Yeah. You give your phone number, maybe someone out there will use the Yeah, yeah, yeah well, if you need to, uh, please do. <laughs> but any, any more questions before we wind up, Chris? So, what year? What years are we talking about when you started? You talk about the Blues Brothers. What's that? Late seventy. Seventy eight. That was. Yeah. Yeah. Because you obviously. Yes, we started. You're too young to. We started in about um, eighty four. <laughs> yeah. so it was a few years after the Blues. I don't know. Yeah. And you, you were always based around Starbridge? Yeah. What, what is it about Starbridge that keeps producing musicians? There's a lot of it. Is there a special brewery? There's a lot of bands coming out. Yeah, everybody. Um, yeah, we had a great fun. We used to play all over the, um, all over the place, you know, all parties, you know, it was good fun. You done European stuff as well? Uh, well, the Isle of uh, Isle of Wight. Like that. Yeah. It's a strange a band that had that reputation. <laughs> it was a really big reputation in the Netherlands. Yeah. You always did well with the Netherlands guys. Yeah. From using whenever we could from bringing the big bear stuff. And um, you were fully pro, weren't you? We were pro, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm amazed you didn't. Yeah. I mean, you were yeah. the white man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always loved to play with you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know, yeah. Because they're a great feeling. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm hoping, maybe, I mean, Leo there, we've been able to find a scene to play in France, and we've had a good time. I hope we get back to, uh, maybe this is what I think we'll get to France and do that European world we should have done those years ago. <laughs> well, in the face of Boris Bloody Johnson, I hope you succeed. Well, thank, thank you very much. Who knows, I'd like to get out there and be stranded. Big Jim. Big. Uh, yeah. Yeah.